so quiet here. Uh, I haven't uh, used this coffee maker in a long time. All right, all right, here it goes. Roasted on February 24th. Still good. It really feels quite amazing to see this office now the way it is. So quiet and to remember what it was like when we were all here. We were working nights and weekends during the early COVID crisis, really trying to get a solution together for the U.S. to do at-home testing. Now it's silent because everybody's home. Right now in America, there's a broad market, many vendors for what I would call vanity testing or the uh, testing for the worried well. Not all of us can afford these vanity tests for $175, but all of us suffer if we don't get everybody tested. And so the work we do at OuterRay as a nonprofit is primarily focused on increasing the accessibility of that testing instead of trying to reach the vanity testing market, which I think is well fulfilled by other companies right now. This is my son, Caleb. This is my wife, Tanya. She works with Adderay as well. Caleb, any opinions on what Adderay is doing with the COVID-19 crisis? It, it won some sort of a grant or something before it was fighting COVID-19. Indeed, yeah. So we have a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as well as from Just Work. I'm not a chemical engineer, so I can't produce a vaccine. I don't know how to make hardware. I just know how to write software. And so a lot of what we focus on is rapid diagnostic testing. We built a rapid diagnostic test or RDT reader app. And we started out using it to interpret results for flu test strips. You first open the app on a phone or tablet. In-app instructions guide you through properly collecting a sample and preparing the RDT. The app then alerts you when the RDT is ready to be photographed. You place a test strip on a surface and take a picture of it app can then provide the test result. And that's it. Outery is focused on how to build on and improve technology for running and interpreting RDTs. And since the pandemic began, we are applying those learnings to the challenge of COVID-19. And now we get to enjoy The Simpsons from Philip. So Philip, is this going to be a recurring theme then? I'm going to like, try as many television shows as I can pull up, yeah. We've built the team to about 16 people at this point. I love working on small teams because you know everybody. There's a high degree of social trust. Um, there's almost no overhead. There are no forms to fill out or gatekeepers that you have to pass. And so things can feel very efficient in one way. I think in another way, however, there's a huge drawback. You're not building on top of infrastructure that thousands of people are working on. Now we are hand building all of that infrastructure. So there's both the pleasure of that direct action, but there's also the, the slowness of realizing that you can't move as quickly. Hi there, I just wanted to check in briefly. We've had a lot of exciting developments over the last few weeks, but one of the biggest things is our product manager, Shauna, got diagnosed as a positive for COVID-19. We've been so careful. We wear masks. We take turns going to the grocery store. If we ever have a doctor's appointment, we mask up. And then the moment that we get home, straight to the shower, close in the washing machine. If we got it, then it's everywhere. The COVID-19 crisis has, I think made many people, myself included, reflect a lot on the everyday things we take for granted. Caleb, you ready to go, little bud? All right, coming through. Seeing our kids be able to go back out into open spaces has been really rewarding. You have your mask with you, right? When outdoors, it is... I think I've also reflected in thankfulness around my work. Uh, the fact that my work can be done remotely, um, that there were almost no real disturbances to the pace at which we produce our products is a real blessing in a way. It's one thing to get a positive test. It's something else to know if it was accurate. So I am going to go in and get myself tested for COVID-19 antibodies. And I have a call with my doctor and she's going to give me the results over a telemedicine visit in a few days.
Right now, absent of new RDTs, the fastest way to get yourself tested for COVID requires that an industrial lab run your test through what's called a PCR test. For the average person, it takes probably a day or two before they are told results. With rapid diagnostic testing with the manufacturers we're working with, each of them expect to give users results within about 15 minutes of beginning the test. So what is it that your company does? We actually build an application that helps clinics like yours to use computer vision to look at rapid diagnostic test strips. Oh, awesome. So anyways, what did my test end up showing? Yeah, you're probably excited to hear. So <laughs> I you, am. Your test was negative for antibodies. Okay. So basically... It's obviously a relief to receive the results that my test is negative, which means that um, I likely never had COVID. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I just think that if I was a healthcare worker or if I worked in a grocery store or in another essential business, that this sort of experience would have been extremely impacting. If there was a rapid diagnostic test available, it would have made a world of difference. As vaccines are now being rolled out, the manufacturers that we are working with expect to produce somewhere on the order of 20 plus million tests a month um, using our software to interpret those tests. We are now making accessible to the general public a type of testing technology that I think will continue to be relevant even after this pandemic. For instance, we expect, at least in the U.S., for full vaccination to take probably between six and nine months uh, after launch. And so there is a whole period of time, almost a year, where you will still need rapid diagnostic testing for most purposes at schools, at events. We also use rapid diagnostic tests to detect whether a person retains their immunity to the virus. Are you posing for a photo call? I think COVID-19, if anything, for this country has highlighted in a very tangible way the debate about social contract and about general health care access. Should the amount of health care you get be dependent on how much you can afford? Are you allowed to cry more? COVID-19 is a disease where it's not just about one person. It's not just about my opinion about whether this person deserves health care because maybe he didn't work for the last three months. So should he even deserve the care? So you want to go past the stairs also? The question really is about if we don't care for others in our society right now, we ourselves are at a greater risk. My hope really is that COVID-19 has this silver lining of getting more people behind the idea of social contract. You know, we're all Americans. We need to pull together. And that's one lesson that I'm really hoping we take away from this crisis.